Millions of families coming from across the globe traveled to the United States during the 1900s, seeking for a better life, not only for themselves, but also their children. Unable to speak English, it was a difficult decision for most families to decide to move to the United States. During this time period, schools in the United States were educating students in only one language, English. As more students that spoke other languages began filling up seats in the classroom, it became a huge burden on teachers to not be able to help teach the students. They realized that the kids were unable to learn since they weren't being taught in a language they understood. As well, parents were becoming frustrated since cultures other than the U.S.'s were not being taught. They wanted their children to learn more about their home country and their culture, but since they weren't taught in schools, they couldn't learn. There were many movements that took place for change to happen in the United States education system, until one day, there was change. The Bilingual Education Act of 1968. The Compromise of the Bilingual Education Act of 1968 helped non-English speaking students understand what they were being taught in class. It helped them be able to obtain better jobs and help the economy grow. In 1954, when the Brown versus the Board of Education occurred, it did not directly affect the education of non-English minorities. However, it did initiate a new era in the United States civil rights and it led to new programs for the disadvantaged. During the 1960s, there were many civil rights movements regarding the lack of educational opportunity in the United States. In 1964, Congress passed the Civil Rights Act, which meant equality under the federal law. Many parts of the act were to help language minority students. For example, Title VI stated that any program receiving federal funding could not discriminate against people because of their race and or national origin. Programs that were not compliant with the law wouldn't get federal funding anymore. Federal funding is important to education since they rely heavily on its assistance. This, then, led to the Elementary and Secondary Education Act in 1965, which helped children that came from low-income families. All of this helped lead to the Bilingual Education Act of 1968. Many American parents were against and worried about their children being part of a bilingual school especially since their children already knew English. However, studies show that students that were a part of a bilingual education performed well on exams testing Spanish achievement, as well as other core academic subjects like math and science. Uh, so my name is Reina Hernandez, and um, I've actually been working in bilingual education in a number of different ways for um, many years. And I was actually in bilingual education when I was in preschool and kindergarten have a lot of science and a lot of research that actually shows a really strong program that is very high quality, that is doing the right types of things, is going to help a student learn both languages faster, and they're actually going to do better academically. Since the federal government was creating many new programs to help the disadvantaged, federally funded grants introduced modern bilingual programs in Chicago. The first bilingual program in Chicago was at Lafayette School. It opened in 1968 and was for Spanish-speaking students. From 1968 to 1973, bilingual education began to grow in Chicago. And in 1973, Illinois required that if 20 students spoke the same language in a school, they demanded instruction in their native language as well. During this time period, over 12,000 preschool to high school students were in 64 bilingual programs that were teaching in Arabic, Greek, Cantonese, Spanish, and Italian. Since Chicago was a pioneer for bilingual education, the National Association of Bilingual Education held its annual conference in 1975 in Chicago. In 1976 and 1985, Illinois ordered that teachers needed to take a language exam and had to identify these areas of knowledge, assessment, method and materials, theoretical foundations, cross-cultural studies, and second language acquisition. By 1990, 44,959 students in Illinois identified as needing bilingual education. The results of bilingual education are great. It allows for equal opportunity, 
It helps the non-native English speakers have a higher chance of getting a good job and helps the economy grow. One of the main issues occurring was that students weren't able to understand what they were learning in class since they didn't speak English. They didn't have an equal opportunity at doing well in life as others did. The Edwards Law of 1889 made teachers in Illinois teach only in English, and many of the parents that traveled to America were not happy about this since their child's education was in jeopardy. By 1893, it was repealed, but it allowed for English-only education to grow and continue. In the United States, many people were against the idea of bilingual education because they believed that it would drop their students' test scores. However, recent studies show that bilingualism increases test scores, helps with grammar, and allows for students to be more open-minded about other cultures. Most importantly, bilingual education also helps close the achievement gap. We have a huge achievement gap that address, includes um, English language learners. So it includes students whose first language is not English. Um, their gap is the largest. But one of the reasons why it's the largest is because the tests are all, the tests that, that are um, identifying the achievement gap are all in English. So I guarantee you that if you take anyone who is equally as knowledgeable in a subject, um, and give them a test in a language that they don't understand and put them right next to someone who knows just as much about that subject and is proficient in that language, they're not going to do the same. They're not going to perform as well. So we have bad data. Part of the reason why the achievement gap is so big is because the data isn't as good. Because of bilingual education, more students that immigrated to the United States were then able to have the option on whether to decide to have a further education after high school. Before, they weren't able to because of test scores, grades, or other school-related issues. As a result, it broadened their career choices since many companies were looking for bilingual workers rather than monolinguals. If it weren't for bilingual education, many students wouldn't have learned English and would have had to get a lower-paying job. In the past five years, the requests for bilingual workers have more than doubled. This shows how bilingual education not only benefits the English learners, but also the native English speakers. A report from the NAE shows that employers continue to want more and more bilingual workers to help with jobs regarding human interaction. John Feinblatt, chairman of the New American Economy, stated, in today's global economy, businesses require employees who can serve customers in a variety of languages. Through bilingual education, many students have grown to become bilingual and have helped companies with high levels of human interaction expand. The Bilingual Education Act helped many students from across the world that came to America. When people migrated from other countries to the U.S., most of them didn't speak English. It was very difficult for immigrant students to do well in school without understanding the language, and it was difficult for adults to get well-paying jobs. There were many protests against schools that did not treat all of their students equally and fairly. A result of not having a bilingual education was segregation among the student body, which led to unfair advantages for the English speakers. When the act was passed, it helped many students not only in Illinois, but also the other states that were led by Illinois' example for a good education system. Students were then able to learn English and it made immigrants feel more welcome to the U.S. Students becoming bilingual also led to them having a higher chance of getting higher paying jobs. Businesses need workers that are able to speak multiple languages so that they're able to expand their company to more than just English speakers. When more people are involved in companies, the economy grows. As well, when bilingual education was implemented into schools, the achievement gap between races decreased, as well as the amount of segregation. From this, we are able to learn the importance of bilingual education and how much it really helps students and their future.